Thanks for joining me today. Hope you're having a great week. Uh, today I want to look at one of the parables of Jesus, specifically the parable of the wicked vine dressers in Matthew chapter 21, beginning in verse 33. Before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Thanks for watching the channel. In Matthew 21, 33, Jesus says, Here another parable. There was a certain landowner who planted a vineyard and set a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. And he leased it to vine dressers, and he went into a far country. The Lord is the one who built this uh, vineyard, and he is the landowner who set a hedge around it. And this vineyard is Israel. He leased it, and he went into a faraway country. And it says in verse 34, Now when vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the vine dressers that they might receive its fruit. And I take these vine dressers to be the religious leaders of Israel. So he sends his servants to them that they might receive its fruit. Verse 35 says, And the vine dressers took his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did likewise to them. Jerusalem was the one who killed the prophets and stoned those who were sent to her. That's exactly what Jesus says over in Matthew chapter 23. Let me read you Matthew 23, 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. See now your house is left to you desolate. This is exactly parallel with what Jesus is telling in this parable. So God has planted this vineyard, Israel. He sent his servants, the prophets to them. They beat them, they stoned them, they killed them. And then last of all, it says in verse 37, he sent his son to them saying, surely they will respect my son. And the son being Jesus Christ when he comes to Israel. Verse 38, but when the vine dressers saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and seize his inheritance. So they took him and cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those vine dressers? So Jesus poses that question. And in verse 41, it says, They said to him, He will destroy those wicked men miserably and lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him the fruits in their seasons. And I think it's extremely um, beautiful the way that God writes the story because we know this is speaking of Old Covenant and apostate Israel. So Jesus comes to them. They kill him. Isaiah 53. Uh, John 11 says he came to his own and his own did not receive him. So they kill Jesus. Um, they get rid of him. And in response, this judgment coming is going to come upon Israel. Going to come upon these Jews. So it says that they told him he will destroy these wicked men miserably. Lease his vineyard to other vine dressers who will render to him fruits in their season. And I think it's extremely interesting that in John 15, Jesus calls us to bear fruit. Uh, he's talking to his disciples specifically, tells them to bear the fruit. And if you can see in Revelation 22, that we're also to bear fruit. And it goes right along with the thoughts of Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, stands in the way of sinners, or sits in the seat of scoffers. His delights in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. And you can see the connection that the people of God are those who bear fruit. They're not the ones who attempt to steal and um, poorly take care of God's vineyard. So he's going to destroy these men and give it to others. Verse 42, Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone? And this is from Psalm 118. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So Christ is the stone. Uh, the builders, the scribes, Pharisees, the religious leaders, they reject Christ, who is the chief cornerstone. If you remember Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 21, it talks about how the church um, was the temple of God, and it was built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, and Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Verse 43, Therefore I say to you, Jesus says to these leaders, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it. Given to a nation, okay? So is God taking like the Assyrians? Is he taking like the Philistines now? Is he going to take, um, you know, is, is he taking like a different nation like that? No, you might remember what Peter said over in First Peter. Let me find it right quick. Um, 
where he tells them that you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. So he's calling them, those who believe in Jesus Christ, they are the holy nation. They are the people of God. They are true Israel. And that's who he's calling when he says, we're going to take it from you, give it to a people bearing fruits of it um, to a different nation. That nation are those who are in Christ who are trusting him. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you, apostate old covenant Israel, and given to a nation bearing the fruits of it, those who trust in the Messiah. And whoever falls on this stone will be broken. But whomever it falls, it will grind them into powder. Judgment's coming. Now listen to this at the very end of this parable. Now when the chief priests and Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking of them. They knew who this was about. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitudes because they took him for a prophet. If I could get people to understand that Matthew... Mark and Luke, the Synoptic Gospels, all three give an account of the Olivet Discourse. John does not give an account of the Olivet Discourse. John's version of the Olivet Discourse and the destruction of Old Covenant Jerusalem and Old Covenant Apostate Israel is the book of Revelation. The quicker people understand that, I think the quicker the New Testament is going to make more sense, and especially a lot of these parables. I think this parable in Matthew 21, beginning in verse 33, is blatantly obvious. Uh, this parable is repeated in Luke. Um, I don't think there's any doubt about what that's talking about. This is the, the picture of Christ judging apostate Old Covenant Israel and giving the kingdom to those who believe in the Messiah, who is Jesus Christ. I hope this is helpful for you. God bless you. Have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below.